Hello and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial. Today we're making this creepy image using geometry nodes and procedural shaders. Let's get started. I've been playing a lot of this new game called Remnant from the Ashes 2. Very cool game, really love it, highly recommend it. But there's a lot of cool art design in it. And one of the characters here, this thing called the Ravager, this is really neat back to it where it's this like glowy blobby thing with veins and dark shapes and stuff. I just love that. I think it'd be really cool to try and make this. So this is where I got the inspiration for today's tutorial. And as you can see, where we landed is pretty cool. It's not quite like it, but it's inspired by it. Um, and I went for these like giant heart-like objects, really fleshy with all these like veins and stuff going around. So we're going to talk about how to make this. Let's get into it. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and kind of model out the basic shape and kind of get a bit of a shot going. And then we're going to work into materials and getting the geometry node stuff to work. So I'm just going to delete everything. So A and X to delete. And I'm going to go Shift A and we're going to create a UV sphere. And this will be the main kind of hero object of our scene. I'll just scale this up. Um, we're also going to create a bit of a hallway space. So I'm going to go Shift A cube and I'm going to scale the cube up. Grab this up. I'm going to go into edit mode and hit number three on my keypad to get uh, the face mode. Grab X and grab X. Let's pull this around here. Um, I might make a bend in the hallway. So I'm going to go control R to create a loop cut. Click and bring this over and then go back to face mode. Click that E and Y and bring that over there. And then we can exit edit mode. And then let's come in here. Let's delete this face and just so we can light it. I'll delete this face as well. And let's just have a look. All right, we'll create some kind of shot in a space sort of like this. So I might make this one a little bit bigger here. So I'm gonna grab those GY, just widen out this hallway a bit. Make that look cool. There we go. All right, this should be, this should be what we're after. Okay, now I'm gonna grab this sphere and I'm gonna intersect the floor with it a little bit. And we're gonna switch over to sculpt mode. I'm going to turn on Dino Topo and click OK. That's fine. Dino Topo is going to create new geo as we sculpt. So, uh, yep. Yeah. And I'm going to come over to the, I guess maybe the bulge tool would probably be good. And yeah, just have a look. So, the plus means we're going to be, as we brush, it's going to move outwards from the surface. If we switch to minus, it will go concave and go in. So, we'll probably switch between those. And the strength of the radius, I'll just keep as is. So, with this, I could just start to kind of sculpt out sections here. Might turn the strength up because I'm not getting much uh, much of a raised surface. There we go. That's what I'm after. So I'm just going to kind of create a bit of like an organic shape. Um, and what I'm thinking in my head is like, this is like a, like a heart kind of thing. So it's got ventricles, right? So we're going to have these like raised areas like this with like lowered zones in between them. Um, and I'm just keeping it loose, keeping it, keeping it fun. Uh, sculpting is a great way to kind of flesh out <laughs> a look for something. So we've got a nasty organic looking blob thing. And I think I am going to blow this wall out. So I'm going to go into edit mode and I'll select this face and this face, hit delete. So now we have this kind of more of an open set and I can light it a bit better. Um, and we are going to go ahead and get rid of this view by clicking in the corner there and then like click and drag over the other view. So let's say get rid of stuff like that. All right, let's go ahead and switch to rendered view. And I'm going to use a, one of these built-in HDRIs. So I'll just click Scene World Off, click the HDRI option, and we can pick any of these. I'll just pick one of these kind of darker ones for now. Um, and I'll take the hallway object, and I'm going to go to the wrench, for, add a modifier. And we're going to add the bevel modifier, just add a little bit of a bevel to this. So I might make the segments too, and just drag it down so it's a bit smaller. Um, I'm, I might go ahead and just take a light in as well. So we're going to shift a uh, sun. And I'll just rotate this around until we get some light coming in the hallway like this. And we'll see how that looks. Something like this is a good start. I'm going to select the goop and I'm going to go to my shader editor. Just pull this up so we can really work on it. Okay. Let's click new, create a new shader. Zoom right in. And we got to turn on a bunch of things. So let's go over to the render tab 
And uh, we're going to use ambient occlusion, bloom, and screen space reflections. But then we want to open up screen space reflections and turn on refraction. Then with this material, this object, sorry, selected, we're going to come over to the material that's on it. This material of one, we can call it a goop just for fun. Uh, go to options and right here. And if you don't see the side panel, by the way, you can get it by clicking the little triangle or hit in on your keyboard, that'll bring it up. So what we can do is grab the blend mode and we're gonna switch it to alpha hashed, shadow to alpha hashed, and then we're gonna turn on these two boxes, which say screen pay, screen space refraction and screen and subsurface translucency. We'll be using all this stuff to, uh, to make this thing look really, really cool. Okay, now let's take the color and we're gonna make it a bit red, a bit of a fleshy color. And um, what these settings we just did, what these are going to allow us to do is use transmission. So if you don't have all that set and don't have refraction turned on under screen space refraction, this won't work. Or screen space reflections, this won't work. Now, transmission is basically um, how much light passes through an object. Um, sort of like subsurface scattering, but it's more like glass. Like light can actually go all the way through it as opposed to being absorbed partway in, which is subsurface scattering. Subsurface scattering is when light hits an object and it goes in a little bit and then gets absorbed and doesn't pass through. Um, whereas transmission is when it goes all the way through. It's just what happens to it along the way uh, where these settings come in. So we can turn up the transmission. And as we turn it up uh, closer to one, it's going to go more and more translucent or transparent. Now the roughness being set to a high number like 0.5 means that it's going to kind of blur that, that see-throughness. But if we drop this down, you can see we drop all the way down to like zero, it's going to start to become fully see-through. In fact, if I go all the way up, you know, close to one on my transmission, um, you can see if I look around, I'm going to be able to see through the object. Uh, it's a bit hard without, a, without lights, but, but we are technically seeing through this Get my camera back. All right, now we're not going to have full translucency like this. We're going to back it off a little bit. And I'll turn the roughness up uh, and the translucency roughness a little bit. Um, I might go ahead and right click Shade Smooth. I think that might be necessary for this object. All right. Now let's get some like weirdness going on inside. Okay. So I'm going to take this object and I'm going to shift D to duplicate and scale it down and grab Z. And then what I want to do is put a different material on this. So I'm going to click the X and then click new. So that took the material off of that object and we put a new one and Blender's automatically called it material 01. And I'll take its base color, make it a bit of a red. I might turn on emission for this. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna turn up the emission strength. You can see as it glows, we're starting to see it uh, inside there, which is really cool. I'm just gonna scale it down a bit and I'll give the emission, go fully bright with it and give it a bit of a reddish color. And then we can turn that strength right up just find a cool spot for it. I'm just going to rotate it around. Just going to see how does it interact? How does it look with the outer surface? Okay. Now I'm going to click the outer sphere and we can play with the roughness. You can see it's going to either make it really transparent or blur it out more. I change the HDRI to see what it looks like in a different environment. Now let's put a bit more variation to the surface of this object. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to grab a Voronoi texture and a color ramp. And I was to shift A to add, to go to the search menu and just clicking on search and typing in Voronoi and color ramp. I'll plug the distance into the factor. And for the color, I'll click this white pip, click the white swatch, and then eyedropper pick the color that we already have. And then I can plug this in here. And this will allow us to have a little bit of variation in our colors. So I can just bring this around and Pick these up a bit, take it off black. Might pick that color there. So I've got like a dark version of the color and a light color and a light version. And then I'm gonna create a bit of noise um, to this noise, make it a little bit different. So I'm gonna grab a texture coordinate node. And then I want to grab a mix color node. Just drop it here, or drop right here, sorry. And I'll take the generated output, plug it into A, and then I'll just take another one of these and plug the distance into B, turn my factor right down, 
and then plug the result into the vector. So what's happening with this? We're taking the texture coordinate, which is the standard blender. Um, it's basically the node that's telling us how do we place this texture on this 3D object. We're taking the generated coordinate, which is the, the default one, the one that's already being used. And we're changing those coordinates a little bit with some noise. So we're mixing in some noise, and then that distorts the way the texture gets placed. Also click plus to create another pip. Bring it over here and darken it. And this will help kind of create another interesting kind of shape to it. So keep it close to black. That'll give us maybe some veined structures that we can work with. Let's see what a different noise pattern looks like. Nice, all right, let's set a bump. Uh, we could use the same system potentially. That'd be cool. We'll just plug this one straight in to see what it looks like. Normal into the normal. And we'll take our distance down to like 0 0.1, 0 0.2. Distance is basically how high do you want the simulated surface to be from like the highest point to the lowest point. So because we're working on kind of a smaller scale, bringing that number down gives it a much more nice kind of uh, realistic look. Add a bit of subsurface in as well. So we go like 0.5 and give it a bit of a red color. And you can see that just helps. There's a little bit of like red absorption now. Um, or just a bit of light absorption on the surface of this thing. All right, let's start to darken the environment. Let's set this hallway up. So I'm going to click on the uh, cube and I'm going to go to the shader editor and click new and I'm going to darken this hallway and I'm going to turn down the roughness, make it kind of a reflective space. Let's go ahead and add in a real HDRI, not one of these built-in ones. So I'm going to turn scene world on so we can actually sculpt our own scene world. I'm going to head over to Polyhaven. So here we are at polyhaven.com, great place to get free textures and HDRIs. We're going to browse HDRIs. I just find a cool one. I'm going to go for something dark and I'm going to switch over into my shader editor to the world shader. Just zoom over to it. You go shift A and we're going to search for uh, a environment texture. And what I'm going to do is take the color into the color and I'm going to open. All right, so I just wanted to polyhaven and I downloaded industrial sunset. Uh, it looks pretty good. Um, let's take this, um, go back to object, take the hallway. I might grab a Musgrave and I'm going to grab a bump this here. Take the height into the height and the normal into the normal. I'm going to take the distance down to like 0.1 and then I'll bring the scale up. I'll bring the dimension down and the detail up. Keep that scale up. Then we're also going to grab a color ramp. Put that there. It's going to create patches. Um, I might ding the distance down to 0.01. I want this to be kind of like a subtle effect. All right, now we're going to need kind of a feature light on this thing that's going to help like make that red glow spill into everything. So I'm going to go Shift A, Light, Point Light, and I'll just move it around. I can turn on my widgets again so I can see it. And I'm going to turn it up just to 1,000 for now, and I'm going to give it a red color. And I just kind of want to move it around in my scene and have a look at what it does. The next thing I want to do is have some like veins and stuff growing on this thing that kind of fill the, the space. So what I want to do is easily create a system where I can, you know, draw on some veins and some roots and stuff, have it follow the surface of this object as well as the floor and do it in a way that I can kind of paint it so I can like look at my view and create this cool image. So we're going to use a bit of geometry nodes and uh, a bit of curves to do that. So I'm going to create a new curve. I'm going to go shift a curve Bezier. Um, and then I'm going to go into edit mode for that curve. We don't need the curve points that are already here, right? So we can actually delete them. So in edit mode, I can hit A to select all the points and X to delete. So now there's like nothing inside this curve. It's just a curve object with no, no curves, no curves whatsoever. What we can do though, is while we're in edit mode, if you just open up the side panel with T, um, you're gonna have some cool tools. And one of these is the draw tool. If we click the draw tool, we can uh, jump back into our camera view and I can switch this to surface. And then I can come over here and we can have, let's see, I'll give it an offset maybe of one and, or maybe let's go 0.5. One's probably a bit much. And the rest of that's pretty good. So we can just literally now draw onto the surface of our objects. So you can see I can kind of come along here, find some contours, draw along like this, and then I can snake it onto the floor and do something like that. And bam, I've got a curve that's actually following that surface. So now with this curve, let's go ahead and take that and let's add some geometry nodes to it. So I'm going to open my geometry nodes editor. So switch the shader editor to geometry nodes, click new, 
And then what we're going to do is come right here and we are going to add a couple of things. First thing I want to do is give it some depth. So I'm going to create a, uh, let's see, curve to mesh. And I can just drop this here. And then we need a profile curve. So we're going to grab a circle curve. This creates a circle and makes it the profile. So basically what it does is it takes the circle and it lofts it or you know follows it along the, the course of the path that we've just drawn and gives the, the gives it shape with that circle. So I can change the radius of the circle and you can see what it does is it changes the thickness of the entire thing. Now, what I want to do is just spread this out a little bit and I'm going to just change a few things about this curve. Let's grab the set curve radius node. I'm going to drop this one here. Everything's going to disappear. But that's okay. And then I'm going to grab the, if you go to the curve menu, you can grab, where is it? Um, read, uh, let's see, spline parameters. And I'm going to take the factor of the spline and plug it into the radius. Now, what's the factor? The factor is basically um, where you are on the, that particular curve. Are you at the start or are you at the end? If you're at the start, you get a one. If you're at the end, you get a zero. So as we travel from the start to end, it's go, it's, the number is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. If we use that to drive the radius of the curve, basically it means that the curve is going to do what you see here. It's going to taper, but it's going the wrong way. So we need to reverse the, uh, the direction. Search for a reverse curve node and just drop it in here. It's important to do it here because this is the, the curve object that's coming in. And then we set the radius. I just want to swap that there. Let's create a bit of a material on this thing as well. So I'm going to hide everything. Um, we might do a bit more geometry nodes. I'm not sure. We'll come back to that. I'm just going to go over to Shader Editor. My goal with this is to have a really simple tool. So I don't want to have a really complex geometry node system. And I want to be able to sort of sculpt it in the way that I want it to look. So I don't want it to be too procedural. I don't want it to like create too many branching paths for me. I kind of want to be in control of that. So I'm going to just leave it at that because at the moment I can go into edit mode in that curve and just draw and it's going to work out really well. So um, let's go ahead and create a cool uh, fleshy material. We could probably start with goop. Um, and now it's not going to show up on the object because we actually need to assign it in geometry nodes itself. So let's go back to the geometry node editor. And at the very end here, let's go set material and drop that down. And then we can use the, um, the material. We'll set it to goop for now, but we'll change that. So let's come back over to our shader editor and with goop, let's click the four. This creates it a unique number. So the four meant that this material is assigned to four different objects in the scene. By clicking that number, it's duplicated the material. And now this new duplicate is just assigned to the, the particular object that we have selected. So the Bezier curve. All right. So for the veins, what we can do is let's, let's get rid of this. We'll call this um, veins. And I'm going to take the transmission off on these guys. I don't think I want to have any transmission on the veins themselves, but I do want the subsurface. Um, so I'm just going to bring that up a little bit. Yeah, I feel like if these things are dark, the contrast is going to be really like these dark browns, but we do need to use a different system for the bump because those are all too dark. The values are too close together. It's not going to quite work in the same way. But if I plug this in and then make this one white, for example, we're going to have a nice level of contrast and we're actually going to get some bump out of that. So with the offset, let's turn on absolute offset. That's going to actually help it sit a bit better above the surface things. And um, yeah, now we can just start drawing out some more of these veins. Um, one thing we can do is create a bit more variation in the shape of these things over the factor of the length of the, uh, the curve. So I come in here and I can actually use a color ramp and oops, a color ramp. Just drop it here. Now, nothing's going to change because this is already, the factor already is going from zero to one, right? Based on where it's at on each little curve segment. But what we can do is we could say, take this white bit and give it a position of 0.5. So it's right in the middle. And then click plus, create a new pip, come over here and make this black. This will start them out small, get them thicker, and then taper them off again. And that might help us in some uh, scenarios. So let's see how that's looking. Like that's a bit nicer up here at the top. And then we can adjust the overall radius. Uh, we can also create a little bit of variation in this, or what we could even do is come over here and grab a mix color, drop it here and set this mix to multiply and set the B color to black, grab a noise texture, and then we're going to plug that into the factor. And then what this is going to do is this is basically going to create some random size differences um, based on yeah, how, how much of a factor we put in.
Also, it could be a cool way to animate it because look at that. It looks like it's like pulsing. Yeah, that's nice. All right, I'm going to go back into edit mode and I'm going to keep being a bit more careful with my placement of these guys. All right, this is cool. So now I feel like I want one more. So like another one that's a bit thinner so I can have more of like fine detail um, veins uh, moving through the scene. So I'm going to leave edit mode and I'm going to shift A, curve Bezier to create another one. Go into edit mode, hit A to select all and X to delete. So again, we have no vertexes in this. Um, in geometry nodes, I'm going to click new to put a new geometry node system on it. And then I'll just assign the one that we've already got, but I'm going to click this little button here, or actually what we could do is let's add just a little more functionality to our geometry node system. In the input node, what we can do is we can actually uh, use these other little notches to create more inputs and they'll appear over here actually in the modifier tab. So what I can do is for the radius, which I've got set to 0.22, I could drag this over and plug it into the radius. And now you can see radius is elevated to this point here. So it's on both of these now. And with this one, what I can do is I can set it to something smaller, like 0.1, and then go back to full screen and grab draw. There we go. Grab draw and in edit mode with the smaller one, I can come here and I can try drawing a few smaller veins and you can see it's going to allow me to do that. Let's add a little bit of Atmos to this. So let's switch over to our shader editor, go to the world shader, and we're gonna add a volume scatter now, scatter mode, there it is. Plug that into the volume, take the density down to 0 0.1, maybe 0 0.05, then we'll take the anisotropy, negative 0.9 something maybe, turn it up a bit. And we just have to take that sun, and move it around. I think there might be much cooler lighting setups for us hiding somewhere. Let's make this light a bit hazy, a bit red. Put another point light and stick it off this way to the back. It to well, thanks so much for watching. Hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and check out the Patreon. Um, if you want to get this project file or watch the full uncut version of this tutorial, which runs for about an hour and a half, uh, you can find that either by joining on Patreon at the second tier and up for the project file. And if you just want the uncut tutorial, you can join at any tier or join at the all access pass level or higher on YouTube. So that's how you can get the uncut tutorials. I constantly put those up, go into a lot of extra detail. Special thanks to all the Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for supporting tutorials like this. Thank you and really appreciate you guys. All right, great. Well, I will catch you later. Have a fantastic week. Until the next one, I will see you later. Bye. Oh, 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 o